Wait, 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 hold on. Before you smash that dislike, let me elaborate something. None of the games on this list today are bad games. Can I clarify that off the bat? I'm not using the word bad, worse, terrible, none of that. All of the games that I'm talking about today are at least possible, but even a couple of them, I would say, are really good games. I, at some point, talked about how excited I was for these games to release. Or they were just really big, popular releases that managed to find their way to the Switch, and then a lot of you guys were hanging around asking me, why, why, why didn't you talk about that? Well, um, here's why. I, I guess I want to tie some loose ends and talk about a bunch of games that aren't necessarily bad games, but I had bad experiences with. And as a result, I don't really like them that much. Personally, please remember that as you go into this. I don't want to have a Xenoblade situation all over again, okay? And let's get started by talking about Crash Team Racing. This is probably not going to go down well. <laughs> But before we talk about this, <laughs> I'm gonna cut to my sponsor for this video. Rain Shadow Legends is honestly one of the only mobile games I've actually ever got stuck into, and that's because it's actually pretty fun. For those that don't know, Rain Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game with almost 10 million players worldwide that have already downloaded the game within just the first three months. Raid has pretty great visuals, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights, dragons, if that's what you're into, and over 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. While capturing footage for this video, I actually unlocked a really cool looking epic dark elf. And I'm legit stoked about that. He looks great. The game is free to play. Of course, they're my favorite mobile games. It has like 200,000 reviews on the Play Store and it has a near perfect score. Oh, you're gonna, there's nowhere for you to sit up there. So what are you waiting for? Go to the description down below. <sighs> Click on the special links and you will get hit in the nuts over 50,000 silver. And a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Oh, and I uh, just freed up some spaces in my clan. So if you wanna join that, you better get in quick. It fills up fast. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring me once again. Now let's talk about some games in a way that's probably gonna upset a lot of you. Okay. <laughs> What? Like, are you actually doing? Oh, g gosh. Believe me, I was excited as the next guy to go down to GameStop and pick up my copy of Crash Team Racing. I even pre-ordered the special edition with a pin and a bobblehead. That's how excited I was. Reason being, I had never played Crash Team Racing before. And before you go down into those comments, yes, I know, that's probably what played a big part in me not enjoying this as much. Nostalgia. I was just excited to pick this game up because I was fresh off the heels of Team Sonic Racing, which I actually really enjoyed. And I really thought leading up to its release, Crash Team Racing looked, oh, a million times better than Team Sonic Racing. So if I enjoyed that, I was gonna love this. No. This game is really, really hard, and that's fine. That's why I still think it's a good game, and it definitely has its place in the kart racer genre. For those people that kind of want that whimsical, fun kart racing experience, but also want a brutally tough challenge that you really have to get picture perfect at to have any fun playing, this is a perfect combination. But for me, who was looking for more of a lighthearted, fun experience in my kart racer, it really wasn't to be found within Crash Team Racing. I'm still not sure. I swore the rubber banding was broken. I, I, I mean, okay, at first I swore there was rubber banding, and then I thought it was broken. Now, after playing it a lot more, I still really can't tell. And I, even, like, looking at forums online, people go back and forwards with, is there rubber banding or not? And it seems like the common opinion is no. Let me explain what rubber banding is. It's essentially kind of what it sounds like when you pass another cart on the track. They'll get, like, a little bit of a speed boost so they can go ahead and blitz right past you to kind of keep the game, I guess, artificially challenging. But I think what I have settled on is it's just that everyone else is just faster than you. And that really forces you to get picture perfect at the game, to nail the drifting mechanic. I don't know why I just cannot get my head around this drifting mechanic. I am fantastic at drifting in Mario Kart, but this is a whole nother beast. Every moment you are driving in a straight line, even on straight pieces of road, you're just losing time. You need to be drifting every single second. You need to be hitting those boosts, you need 
need to be making sure you're getting all of the apples. You need to be doing every single thing possible to make sure you're staying ahead of the other cards. Easy is way too easy. And then anything above that is just way too brutally hard. And the adventure mode, that's where I started playing the game. And like three to four days into playing it, I was stuck on the third race. I couldn't beat it. For the life of me, I tried again and again and again. I was really struggling to have fun because I could not win. And like in the adventure mode, you have to come first to continue on. So I kind of just gave up on the adventure mode and started playing online. And that was pretty great because everyone has the same base speed. And I was managing to win the online a lot when the online was actually working for me because the online had a whole other bunch of issues, which made that kind of frustrating. And I kind of just took a step back and I looked at Crash Team Racing as a whole and realized that if I really wanted to have fun in this game, I was going to have to pump in just countless hours to get really good at it. And it wasn't something I was willing to do because I wasn't having fun as it was. So I shelved the game and never went back to it. I'm not saying it's bad. There are plenty of you out there that are really great at this game. And if you're good at it, I can see it being, oh, a ton of fun. Plus, it plays really great on Switch. Surprisingly great. This game is gorgeous. I would say it's by far the best looking racer game on the Switch. Even better than Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8, there's something about that game that is just <laughs> endless fun for me. Whereas Crash Team Racing is just drift, drift, friggin' drift, boost as much as you can. Are you drifting? Make sure you're drift. You have to drift. Oh, I... I blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Crash Team drifting <laughs> is fun if you can pull that off. But for me, uh, not so much. I just suck at it, so who knows. Oh. You're still here? Um... <laughs> We probably haven't hit 10 minutes yet, so I mean, if you want to talk about another game, I can try and figure something out really quick. I mean, um... Mario Maker, Realm Royale... I kind of like Realm Royale. Stranger Things, the game. Well, there's an unrememberable experience. Let's talk about that one. know where else I'm gonna be able to gush about how much I love Stranger Things the TV show so I guess I'll take like a minute to do it now. Wow isn't this show amazing? Uh, I wish as a content creator I had an extra platform where I could talk about movies and shows I really love because while watching Stranger Things I just wanted to review it or talk about it or share my love for it in some way. They've managed to so perfectly hit the nail on the head with so many different genres and themes from the 80s and 90s and bring it all together into a fantastic TV show for the 2000 and whatever year we're in for that that Steve is by far my favorite character. If I could work for a week in Scoops Ahoy, I would love that. Actually, now it's kind of like I do work there. What flavor do you want? They're all on the back. And there is a video game made for the show, released on the same day the show came out, July 4th. It's a beat-em-up that follows the show's story to a T. It's essentially you do play out every single episode. The game's even broken down into chapters like the show is. Believe it or not, I enjoy myself a good beat-em-up. The Scott Pilgrim vs. The world game was incredible. Actually, it's my favorite beat em up of all time. So I went in really hoping it was going to be good. But having looked at all the trailers and promotional material leading up to it, it kind of did look very bare bones basic. And then I got my hands on the game and it it started okay. A again, it directly follows the show. So having just seen the show, that was a little bit lackluster. It was kind of cool to see how they taken the entire story and squished it down into a condensed 16-bit beat-em-up experience. But it really left no twist turns or surprises as far as the story went. So okay, that's fine. Well, now I'm here for the gameplay, right? That's what's left. It's the game itself and the structure of it, the pacing and the gameplay. And all of that is really slow. The gameplay mechanics are pretty simple. You wail on an attack button to do a basic attack and then you have a special attack for every character which is essentially just a big explosion of some kind. Some characters do have certain elemental effects like fire or poison, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really add too much of a difference. You'll just pick your favorite character and then you'll use them. I will say that almost every cast member from the show got their own playable character in the game. There's a lot of different playable characters and that was really cool. But after playing the game for about an hour, you will experience everything the game has to offer. There's a bunch of mediocre puzzles that are more frustrating than anything and they feel completely random at times. And then the combat and the enemy variation, it's essentially just random dudes and rats. 
There's a lot of rats in this game. Some things I really did like about it is it's an open world-ish game where you get side quests that you can complete if you want to. They're optional. And honestly, the side quests, I would say, were more fun than most of the main quests because I didn't know what was going to happen. One element of the game I really did appreciate was it had crafting. You can equip yourself with up to five items to give you certain kind of boosts, like more health or more damage or more defense, etc, etc. But there was issues even with that mechanic too. For example, every item you could craft needed like between four to six other things to make it and I never seemed to find any of them at the same time. Oh and furthermore the items you needed to craft an individual item were so random and redundant. Like okay let me list these items for you and you tell me what you think they make. So if I was to combine glasses, a lead pipe, a rake, a lighter, a bottle of water, and a coin purse, what do you think those things would combine to make? I'll give you a second to figure it out. A wallet. It's, that's that's how you make a wallet within the game. <laughs> like, I don't know. I would have appreciated it more if I was combining like a lead pipe, a rake, and a lighter into something like, I don't know, a flamethrower. You know, like the pipe sits on the rake and then put a lighter at one end, maybe some gasoline somewhere else. I don't know, but it makes something that actually looks like the items that come together. But you're telling me if I want a larger wallet to hold a few extra coins, I need to go around trying to find a rake and a lead pipe? And binoculars? It's just random, pointless garbage. They decided that's what you need to make a certain thing. Ugh. So many people wanted me to talk about Bloodstained, specifically on Switch. Because it's one of those really big, awesome releases that so many people were excited for. I was excited for it. The big question is, because it's gonna be on Switch, how does it play on Switch? How does it look? How does it run? Because it's the perfect game to play portably. So if it's gonna look and play just as good on my Switch as my Xbox and my PlayStation, Station, I may as well buy it on Switch and have that portable aspect to it. And sadly, it really just didn't pan out the way I wanted or really anyone wanted it to on Switch. This one kind of throws a curveball into the mix because for half of it, it has nothing to do with the game itself, more so with my Xbox. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I will say the game is great. I really love the way it turned out. The combat, it's a little clunky for me, but it gets the job done. It is pretty varied later in the game. I was having a good time playing it until I wasn't. So here's what happened. Um, I initially picked it up on the Switch and I started hearing a lot of really bad negative things about it. And then the curiosity in me went online and started looking at some side-by-side -side comparisons of this game versus PlayStation and Xbox and it was a pretty big jump. It, it was a pretty huge difference. And I was really excited for this game. And looking at the side-by-sides of this game on Switch and then on PlayStation or Xbox, I wanted to play that version. I wanted to play the beautiful, crisp, 60 FPS version. But I decided to persevere and start my playthrough on Switch. Immediately, <laughs> uh, I noticed some pretty big input lag but again I went online and I talked to my buddy Spawnwave and apparently yeah the Switch version has it's pretty noticeable input lag and then about an hour or two into my playthrough that's when the devs tweeted that they were gonna shift all of their focus towards fixing the switch port because they had listened to everybody's feedback they were taking it on board they realized it wasn't up to everyone's expectations and they wanted to get it there they wanted it to be the game they promised and I really loved that and I really appreciated that but I didn't want to wait to play the game so I started it on Xbox and it's so much better. Like, it's honestly, it's night and day. This game on my Xbox was so detailed, crystal clear, bursting with color, HDR turned on. I love the way this game looks. Having to start the game again made it a little slow for me. And then even like three or four hours in, I kind of felt like I was just chugging along. But then after you beat that twin-headed dragon thing, which was a really cool and frustrating fight, the game really opens up and explodes. And I was starting to have a ton of fun. And then the area I live in had a huge lightning storm. And and short-circuited my entire house. I have everything in my house on surge protectors like you should, but my Xbox One X wasn't on a surge protector, and you might be wondering why. Well, it's actually because I'm an idiot. And I'm telling you now, I got my Xbox One X back yesterday. My buddy Spawnway fixed it. Thank you so much, Spawnwave. He has a video about that coming, so subscribe to his channel and make sure you look out for it. I'm gonna do a little stupid skit for it at the start of it. My experience is being ruined, and I don't think it's inherently the game's fault, but I went back to my Switch, hoping there was some kind of update. There wasn't. They still, to this day, right now, they haven't fixed anything. Apparently there was one small update that fixed the shards in the game, but it's not a fix that helped anything. And after playing it on my Xbox for eight hours, going back to the mud visuals, the 
frame rate issues and the input lag, it was hard to enjoy that experience as much as I had just enjoyed the last eight hours on my Xbox. So after an hour or two of trying to get back into it on my Switch, the issues and all of that, it kind of just... I put it down, Mario Maker came out, Dragon Quest Builders came out. I think ultimately my takeaway is, of course, I think it's a really great game, as I said, and I just had a bad experience, but if you guys can take anything away, I'd say stay away from the Switch port if you haven't bought it yet, and wait to see if these updates, whenever they come out, actually do bring the game up to where it needs to be. And if you just can't wait, because the game has been out for a while, I would recommend picking it up elsewhere. I don't like being negative about video games. I'm well aware that Pretty much everyone else is going to have a different opinion to me on this, so feel free to leave it down below. And I would end this by saying, if you like the look of any of the games I talked about, go ahead and try them out for yourself, and don't take my word on this one. This time, in this specific case, usually I would say trust me. But in this case, do not trust me. I hope you hit that like button today and not the other way around. I wouldn't blame you, but I tried my best. If you're still here, you should probably flip on that subscribe button. I'm just gonna go um, before I upset anyone else. Okay, see ya. <laughs>